Funding for the Art Show was made possible by Montgomery County Arts and Cultural District, the Virginia W. Kettering Foundation, proud supporter of the arts in our community, and viewers like you. Thank you. In this edition of the Art Show, North South Studios is not your typical tattoo parlor. The definition of art, at least in my opinion, is that it should produce an emotional response in anyone who views it. A Columbus doll maker's creatures have their own personality. I kind of imagine that they maybe inhabit a world that, you know, like maybe they come alive at night. An exhibit of Western art changes viewers' interpretation of the landscape around them. This show allows artists of today to not reinterpret, but to say it through their own visual vocabulary. And we meet a creative type whose lifelong love of architecture informs his artistic style. I like to draw when I travel and capturing different cities and their skylines. It's all ahead on this edition of The Art Show. Hello, I'm Rodney Veal and this is The Art Show, where each week we feature local, regional, and national artists and arts organizations. This small, sleepy town is home to a tattoo parlor, which is anything but antique, or seedy for that matter. It's actually an art gallery. The best tattoos that ever get done are usually the ones that you custom design, so uh, we figured if we designed custom only tattoos here and also had people bringing in their own artwork on a rotating basis that it would give us a kind of shop that we haven't seen before. A lot of the artists in town got together to try and discuss how to bring the public into noticing the arts and Ted mentioned that he'd be interested in getting some artists in here on a monthly basis and make the community more aware and I don't know of any other place like that, an art gallery and you know, tattoo studio. Uh, haven't seen it before, I think it's unique and I think it works well. We have been focusing on local artists since we've opened. We've had photographers, we've had painters, we've had sculptors. Every month it seems like somebody brings me in something different. It's definitely nothing I've ever seen before. And the nice thing about it is, is it brings a different client in. It brings somebody that's here not just for tattoos. It brings in the person that wants to see the art also. A couple years ago I was out drawing on site and uh, stopped in Ted's uh, shop and he asked me if I would like to show and I was the first one to show in their tattoo parlor and uh, enjoyed it very much. I don't really perceive tattooing as being anything but art, but a lot of the other people in the world have different ideas about it. The definition of art, at least in my opinion, is that it should produce an emotional response in anyone who views it. If you see something you like, that's an emotional response. If you see something you hate, that is also an emotional response. And thus, sometimes we don't like the art that we see, but that does not make it any less art. The same holds true with tattooing. The design is producing an emotional response in the viewer, and therefore, love it or hate it, you can't deny that it is art. How's it been going? Earl Orion is my best tattoo client. He gives me some freedoms artistically in each job that I do, because he knows that makes for a better tattoo. I've spent a lot of hours. We've figured it up probably close to 150 hours sitting in a chair over the last 10 years with him. And it's a very intimate experience. You get to know the person very well. We spend time together outside the shop. And, you know, that's not an experience you get with your auto mechanic or your plumber. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a totally different experience than most things you'll find. Originality is in really high demand in this business. And we've had people come in who say, I want a tattoo, but I don't know what I want. And I usually have to tell them, you don't want a tattoo. You just like the idea of having a tattoo. So really, the personal expression idea behind tattoos should be prevalent in your mind. There's not anything that I have on my body that does not have a personal meaning. I've never went in and said, ooh, I like this. Give me this. Or said, ooh, 
just throw that on my body. Everything that I have has a personal significant meaning to me um, from day one. I tend to try to give people a better idea of what they're going to get and put it on paper first. I like no surprises. The process usually involves making a photocopy of that final drawing and then put it through a stencil machine or redraw it on a certain piece of paper that transfers the stencil onto the skin. After we do that, I put the stencil on the skin and then they check out and see if they like the way it's sitting on their skin position, whether it's crooked, needs a readjustment, or higher up or lower, or anything like that. We use a natural based pigment delivery system for doing tattoos. All of our inks use natural items in the mix. Uh, they're dispersed in a liquid, which is a combination of distilled water and a little bit of rubbing alcohol and glycol. Sorry, vegans. And so what ends up happening is the water puts the ink into the skin, but then after a couple days, the water disperses and all that you're left with in the skin is a powdered pigment. It looks like a big single needle, but really it can be multiple groupings and different shapes for almost every different kind of tattoo you need to do. You can get seven, eight different greens or blues in a range just by blending a little bit. So if you're doing things like water or something that's really organic or something, you know, you can get away with making it look more complex with a multiple color blend, it always looks more impressive. I've always been an artist. If it was up to me, I'd be giving everybody skull tattoos because that's what I like, but it really is more about what they're gonna wear on their body so I don't get much of a choice in the matter. And so as a result, since anything could be on the table at any moment in tattooing, you gotta be able to do anything. As a human, we can always count on mistakes. As a good tattoo artist, you can always count on fixing them, no matter who makes them. For photos of gallery artists and tattoo work, click the North South Studios link at thinktv.org slash theartshow. Artist Amanda Louise Spade has created a whole world populated by endearing doll-sized creatures. She describes her fabric creations as reminiscent of cast-off children's toys and ill-conceived taxidermy experiments with crooked human teeth. Their nervous and somewhat spooked appearance leaves one to wonder whether they are more afraid of us than we are of them. An artist is inherently a creator. Someone who translates mental flashes and images in their brain into something that we can experience with our own eyes. Amanda Louise Spade has a whole world that exists inside her head, and her gifts to us are the odd and beautiful creatures that populate it. I know it's like an orphanage here. It's like the, it's like the halfway house for wayward creatures. Each of Amanda's creatures are handmade and give off their own unique history and personality. However you might classify Amanda's work, it might seem as though you're making a strange new friend, and not just another art object to collect and put up on your wall. I kind of imagine that they maybe inhabit a world that, you know, like maybe they come alive at night. I mean, you're sleeping. You don't know what happens. Like maybe they're eating crumbs from under the refrigerator, like dead bugs in the windowsill, like are they like eating your expired cough syrup? They're the character actors of the art world and that, that, you know, they're never the most beautiful, maybe they're not hunky, they always look nervous, they always look a little bit spooked, but you know, they don't know, it's a big world out there. I do feel very maternal about them, like I brought them into the world and it's important to me that I know that they're going to a safe place and that they won't be allowed to play in traffic and someone will keep them from touching a hot stove and they'll be all right. Amanda's work is sought after by collectors all over the globe. Recently, she was sought after by director Christopher Cazellis. Cazellis contacted Amanda to make puppets for his upcoming stop-motion animation, The Maker. Of course I said yes, because that's something that goes all the way back to childhood dreams of making puppets and seeing them alive and seeing them move, because it's one thing to have a beautifully crafted object sitting there that you look at and you're proud of and you're like this exemplifies all the things that I want but then to see it blink or turn its head or move or breathe was just amazing and he's a very gifted animator. Amanda's puppets were painstakingly animated by Zealous Creative resulting in an absolutely gorgeous and touching short film. The maker has gone on to screen at over 60 festivals worldwide 
and made one artist extremely happy. I totally cried like a baby when I saw it for the first time because it was kind of like, I knew it. Like, I knew they're real. Like, I told everyone they were real and now I can prove it. Like, to see them moving and blinking and existing not as a still frame was really, really amazing. I'd love to do that again. One can only hope to see Amanda's creatures come to life again, and her brood is growing. Recent shows in Columbus, Albuquerque, Chicago, New York City, and even in Japan have kept Amanda extremely busy finding new homes for her wayward creatures. There's a world that I wish existed, and as an artist, I have a rare gift, and that gift is that I can make it. So I'm taking every opportunity I can to actually make this world in my brain happen. It's very exciting. To watch the rest of The Maker, visit www.themakerfilm.com. You can find Amanda's work invading the internet and on her blog at mandylouise.blogspot.com. Hi, I'm Seth Wade, and here's a tip for some painters out there. If you want to avoid the expensive framing costs and want to put up a show of paintings, tape your edges with painter's tape first, then seal the front of your canvas or board, then do your painting, and when you peel off the tape, nice clean edges. No need for framing. To view any of tonight's stories again, or watch an episode in its entirety, watch The Art Show on demand at thinktv.org slash theartshow. You'll also find bonus features and extended interviews on select artists. The Coors Western Art Exhibit is a celebration of today's evolving arts culture in the West. The show is held in a traditional Colorado stockyard where viewers are able to experience the show rather than merely view it. The exhibit features contemporary artist Ku Wang Ho, who adds a unique perspective on this art form. people think of Western art, immediately it's cowboys, wagon trains, things like that. But that doesn't exist in that fashion today. I think the show, how it might differ from the, the traditional Western art, you think of it as cowboys and Indians and, and horses and, and uh, landscapes of, uh, that have to do with the West. This show allows artists of today to not reinterpret, but to say it through their own visual vocabulary. The niche of the Coors Western Art Exhibit and Sale, and my vision as a curator for this show, is to stick with what is happening today, contemporary art. So what we're doing is saying, what is the West like today? And in this show, you will see art from so many different artists who have a different take on what they see happening in the West, and then approach it in their medium. This year, our featured artist is Quang Ho. I uh, came from Vietnam in 1975. I came over um, a day after the fall of Saigon. I was 11 years old. I started drawing when I was about two or three years old, and I never stopped. I have trouble going to sleep at night because there's not enough time in the day to do all the concepts that I have in my head. I will never have writer's block in the sense that I can start with any one thing a horse or a still life or a landscape, and I immediately see 10 different ways to talk about that. He absolutely doesn't look like your typical Westerner, but he's very much of the West. He is looking at the West and horses and everything else in this countryside from a different perspective. He sees the horses as athletes. He sees them as graceful as ballerinas. But he also brings this really wonderful technique. It's very much the joy of paint, playing with paint, pushing colors in and out, playing with abstract forms. How much can he lose of that horse and still keep us as an audience engaged? Some of the paintings, I'll, I'll paint a very 
complete realistic horse and then I scrape it all off and then go back on top of it. So that's why you have layers and layers on the paintings. So the horse is just the starting point. It allows me to explore with paint and the horses can change so I'll keep parts of it and let other parts go. So in the end, the composition is what really matters. Our artists have a lot of fun with the show. We have oil, pastel, watercolor, bronze, and stone sculpture. We also have clay work in the show, which are generally the traditional forms that you find in a show like this. We're one of the few shows that includes photography. There's a photograph in the show that's from Mesquite, Texas, that is a tree that has several hanging dead coyotes from it. And ranchers to this day fight with environmentalists and it's a big issue in the West. So instead of shying away from having a confrontational photograph like that in the show, uh, we put it out there and it's gonna be a great conversation starter. There's such a wonderful variety of work in the show and Rose has done a really great job of bringing it to a higher level than just Western art, in a sense. This particular art exhibit, being at the National Western Stock Show, you don't just experience it visually, you hear it and you smell it. <laughs> This show, we are on the grounds of the stockyards. It's a lot of fun, it's loud, it's enjoyable, it's an experience. It's a Western experience. And all the net proceeds that we raise from this show goes to the National Western Scholarship Trust. So we are literally helping keep the Western way of life alive and well because we are putting kids through college who are studying agribusiness, rural family health, medicine, veterinary sciences, and on and on. So we have been able to do some really wonderful things with Western art in a space like this. I know what art does to me as an artist. It has taught me to dig deeper. It transports you into a state of aesthetic arrest, which is in a way stepping out of the world. And where time stops and wanting stops, there's no desire. Everything stops and there's just beauty. I think the best way that art in general, and, and in particular this show, the Coors Western Art Exhibit, can help people understand the West, is when you look at the paintings and the sculpture and everything that's in the show, it's very hard to walk out of these doors and not look at the landscape differently. It's an experience, and you walk through life and you see the world differently. It's a wonderful thing art does for us. Visit thinktv.org slash the art show to find a link for more information on the Coors Western Art Exhibit. Before we get to our bonus feature tonight, let's travel the world, take in cityscapes, and gaze up at the ceilings of the finest concert halls, all through the eyes of an artist. Meet Steve Slasky. His work might be described as frenetic with its many squiggly lines and splashes of color. Indeed, it's this energy that helps transport Slasky's viewers to the faraway places he depicts. To me, it's always been almost a, a compulsion to draw. I feel like I'm primarily an observer, then I capture what I see in my own, my own style. My name is Steve Slasky, and I'm an artist. I mean, it seems like I've, I've been drawing pretty much my whole life. I'd say I started out just drawing everything around me, but, but I developed a particular interest in architecture. Visually, just the excitement of the man-made environment that we created. I have a degree in architecture. Wisconsin. So, I mean, I, I always, I had that, I thought architecture was a way of combining my interests in, in, in buildings and in drawing. I started out being very interested in a lot of the historic buildings in, in Milwaukee. I had done the Miller House and the J, Judge Jason Downer House on the corner of Prospect and Juneau, because I was just inspired by the history of those buildings the excitement of what we've created, the man-made created, contrasted with the natural environment. And I think also a part of my work has been the contrast of the, of the new with the old, the, uh, the historic architecture with modern architecture that I find very exciting. What you're seeing in the piece is 23 drawings from what has become 
over 300 drawings that I've done in concert settings. Some of the earliest ones were at St. John's Cathedral in Milwaukee. So the title of this piece is Drawing Music and it, in various places, mainly the Chicago Cultural Center, where I go almost weekly to, to draw in that setting. It's a beautiful setting in the old Chicago Public Library. I like the combination of drawing during a concert, letting the music flow as part of the drawing. I've found through this process that, that the music really does feed my, my artistic output. Most of these drawings, I give myself the time of the concert, which is less than an hour, to complete one of these drawings. You're capturing the artist, the environment, you're surrounded by the music, you feel the energy from the artist, you're there among the people listening. It's the entire experience. I generally start with the musicians. I am so taken with that space that I've drawn it from every angle now. But I've always done this uh, as part of my travels too. I've always been inspired by the, by what's around me. And when I travel, I always find you know exciting new places to be. It's these drawings that I do there, it captures a moment in time that I find really exciting. I like to draw when I travel and capturing different cities and their skylines. It just seemed like a natural thing for me to do. Of the skylines, I did one of the uh, Chrysler Building in New York, which was exciting to me because it was a combination of an actual scene and creating a piece using a model I had built of the Empire State Building as a vantage point for this drawing. I started out doing my, doing my drawings and adding color to those drawings. Over time, you know, the color got bolder. I started doing just paintings in color, getting away from the line. But I always end up going back to drawing, which I feel like is, is so, such an intrinsic part of my work. The mural behind me is actually funny because it's, it's the back of the band shell in Millennium Park, which throughout the summer season in Chicago, there's free concerts there all summer long. The idea be behind these murals was to depict different Chicago neighborhoods, particular scenes of Chicago, Chicago architecture. One of my favorite exhibitions that I've done is uh, a show of portraits drawn from life, from live sittings, taking this thing we've talked about with buildings and applying that to the dynamic drawing another person and capturing them in a drawing that was done directly in ink, not sketching it out first in a limited time period. That was very exciting to me. Drawing is so important to all aspects of art. You might not see things as drawing based, but you know, you have to be able to draw to communicate your ideas, put it out there and be okay with it. Just letting line and color flow. Believe in what you do. Are you an artist or know an artist with an interesting story? Pitch it to us. Send an email to theartshow at thinktv.org. Include contact information and links to performances or art samples online. And for a little fun tonight, the Dublin Arts Council in Central Ohio, like all museums and art galleries, serves as a caretaker of fine artwork and installations. But the DAC is home not only to fine art displays, but also fine feline displays. Allow us to introduce you to D-Art, the Gallery Kitty. You know, we don't say welcome to Dublin Arts Council, we say are you allergic to cats? In the building itself, we have a gallery series. Um, we have classes and camps over the summer. And then outside the building, we have a concert series and we have a, a plethora of public art. Yes, we have a full-time resident who is the most popular staff member in the building. Uh, his name is Dart.
start as a stray that sort of came to us through one of our staff members. The story is he was living on a farm and um, not getting along with the rest of the cats. So we received a call from Pennsylvania and they said, you know, would you consider the cat? So of course the staff came to me and said, you know, there's this cat and could we possibly, you know, take the cat as a, you know, gallery cat? So I agreed and, uh, you know, the cat just sort of won us over. Well, he attends all meetings, if he can. Uh, and it's always meetings where you have lots of papers on the desk or on the table. Uh, hands down, he'll be there and he'll lie right on the papers. He just sort of dispels the, um, the elite sort of sense of uh, the gallery and the Arts Council. He just sort of brings it down to a level where, okay, I'm comfortable here, this was an old home, you know, it just happens to be a gallery where there's art. It's something to talk about other than, oh, there's a grant due or we're not gonna meet budget this month. Um, it just sort of brings it all down to some sort of a calm um, take on the world. I know my cat, Augie, makes my world better for sure. And that wraps it up for this edition of The Art Show. There's a lot of fantastic art out there, and if you see me out there, say hi to me. Until next time, I'm Rodney Veal, and thanks for watching. Funding for the Art Show is made possible by Montgomery County Arts and Cultural District, the Virginia W. Kettering Foundation, proud supporter of the arts in our community, Ohio Arts Council, Ohio Humanities Council, and viewers like you. Thank you.